my mission to speak about mental health in the music industry and to raise awareness about this topic and to hopefully end the stigma related to mental health issues in the music industry. I am super happy and honored that I can be part of this Reconnect live stream that Beatport and When the Music Stops have set up for us today so we can reconnect and feel that we are not alone. I want to share some inspiring stories by two artists that every one of us know. Artists that I have spoken with during the pandemic to see how they are doing. And they shared stories with me that empowered me so much that I've asked them if I could share those stories today. The stories are from Fluke and Chris Liebing. So let's start with Fluke. I called Fluke the other day to see how he was doing and we had a conversation about how many artists must feel that they have lost a part of their identity now. Now they are not able to do any gigs. Same happened to him. He actually started asking himself and questioning everything that he has been doing up to now. He even questioned why he was in the music industry. He said that six months before the pandemic hit us, he already wanted to live a healthier life because the music industry can be quite a toxic environment as well. As passionate he is about music, he also feels like many of us that it's a competitive and high demanding fast moving environment, which also has its dark sides, which can lead to anxiety, depression, or maybe addiction. So during this pandemic, he saw himself from a different perspective, asking himself the questions, why am I in music? What am I doing with my life? Even before the pandemic, he said, sometimes I went into the studio and I wasn't really effective at all because what I did was comparing myself to other artists on social media, looking at what are they doing to become more successful? He said, actually, I was trying to be and do something that I am not. So what did he do? He started to work out every day. Fluke is working out every morning and he says, it was not just good for my body. I didn't just become physically stronger. Also, my mind became stronger. I became more resilient to things. So also the answer to his question, the question to what am I doing with my life? What is my purpose? He said, I began to notice that even in a lockdown or even during the pandemic, my entire life is based on music. Everything I do is connected with music. He even said, music is the engine of my life. And I know that when I am able to perform in front of an audience again, I will be stronger physically and healthy and with a healthier mindset. And I will perform with a different kind of energy with more light, he said. So I asked him, what kind of advice would you give the listeners and the viewers today? And he said, well, it's simple. Get out of your own way. Get out of your comfort zone. Start taking care of your health and do what you love. So actually what Fluke did here was change his perspective. Instead of becoming externally driven by making music to get to his next gig, comparing himself to other artists, now his motivation actually comes from within, his inspiration. And your inspiration is always there. And this is what he used. He became stronger because everything he does now is connected with his purpose. Actually, the same thing counts for Chris Liebing. When I had Chris on the phone the other day, he told me this amazing story about how he was dealing with the pandemic. And a thing that he noticed is that before the pandemic, two thirds of his life was arranged and planned and scheduled by others. Meaning when you're an artist like Chris, with so many gigs, 
somebody tells you this is the gig that you need to go to this is your flight this is the hotel that you need to go to this is the club that you need to go to the next morning this is your flight this is your hotel this is your gig and so on he even said that that one third that he had left of his time was supposed to be for him but he noticed that's not really the case because when I'm home I was in my studio checking promos making music or answering emails meaning that his entire life has been scheduled and planned around his career he said the only thing that I needed to make choices for was the kind of music that I was going to play during that gig. So it was really, really overwhelming for him to suddenly have 100% time for himself. And this led to two things. One of them was that he was starting to ask himself the same questions as Fluke did. Why am I doing what I am doing? What is my purpose in life? Well, we all know that with a person like Chris, an artist like that, the answer, we didn't have to wait really long for that answer. He knew music is my life. This is what I need to be doing. So even when he was home, he wanted to connect with the music and with his fans. So what did he do? He set up a live stream from home really fast. What an amazing hashtag, by the way, alone together, which is really much related to what we're talking about today. You are not alone. So that's his purpose, the music, the connection with the music and the connection with his audience. However, what he noticed that is that he started to procrastinate because he had so much time now and it was so overwhelming. He also did what Fluke did, starting to compare himself with other people, with other artists, what are they doing with their time right now? How productive are they? Should I be doing, doing the same things? But it wasn't helping him at all. Thank God he found a good solution. He stopped comparing himself to others and started to take better care of himself. So how did he do that? He said, I started to structure my day, especially the first few hours of my day. The first two hours of his day are all about him. He doesn't take his phone to answer emails or look on social media. He is eating healthy breakfast. He's exercising, working out, stretching. And then he says, I will take my phone and see what comes towards me on that day. Also, what he noticed is when he was still getting a little bit anxious or nervous about the situation as it is, he says, the only thing that I need to do then is be present. And I said, okay, that's easier said than done, but how do you do that? So he told me this. He said, the only thing that you need to be doing when you feel anxious or nervous is ask yourself this question. Can I do something right now to change this situation? If the answer is yes, start doing it. If the answer is no, then have peace with it. Let it go and start focusing on what drives you, which for him and Fluke is definitely music, their purpose. So I asked Chris, what is the advice that you would give to the viewers of Reconnect today? And he said, well, stop comparing yourself, find your own flow, give less fucks. That's what he said. And tap into your purpose, your why. Actually, I found out that Fluke, Chris, as well as myself have been doing the same things. We have been questioning our purpose, our why and we moved our focus from external factors to internal so we, we stopped comparing ourselves to others we stopped finding the motivation to do what we needed to be doing from the outside but we went inside to find out what is it that I want to be doing 
Where do I get my inspiration from? And I'm challenging you right now to see for yourself in your own life. Are you externally driven or internally driven? What is your purpose? What is your why? It really helps you build up resilience, being less anxious and being really happy about the things that you are doing on a daily basis. And remember, you are not alone. So if you need help with this or you have questions about this topic, please reach out on my Instagram and I'll make sure that I will answer you. Thank you so much for listening to me today. I hope these stories from Flug and Chris are as inspiring and empowering for you as they were to me. And remember, you are not alone.